What if I told you that 80% of my workflow revolves around using Google services? I spend almost 80% of the day spending time on Google Chrome. Seriously, everyone here at the team does. We use Google Sheets to basically tabulate all of our benchmark results uh, to make sure that everything stays validated, everything stays up to date so that it's relevant with the current hardware. We use Google Sheets to uh, put all of our script ideas, our brainstorming ideas and all of that stuff. We use Google Meets to catch up on a weekly basis to brainstorm uh, ideas for upcoming content. And the list just goes on. I think it's pretty safe to say that Google Workspace plays a huge part in the way how we operate things here on the channel. And that made me question or think, I could technically get away with using a Chromebook for at least 80% of those tasks that I was talking about earlier. My last Chromebook experience was about eight years ago. I remember I was finishing up school uh, and I picked up this really cheap Acer Chromebook 15 from Best Buy, which I used for sort of like my multimedia device where I was able to plug it into my TV and consume content. I also remember taking a lot of notes using Google Drive. Um, it was a pretty awesome laptop for the price. I mean, it, I, I wasn't really able to complain uh, too much about it. Um, and at the time, I also didn't have the means to afford a really high-end, expensive gaming laptop. I remember that Chrome OS had a lot of limitations back then, but over the course of these past eight years, Google has continually added more support, more features to the operating system to enhance the overall productivity experience. And I'm excited to partner up with Google to showcase the possibilities of what a modern Chromebook can offer. Now, I completely understand that, you know, if you're a hardcore gamer or a nerd, that a Chromebook possibly won't be in your radar. But this video is strictly catered towards people who are just looking for a cost-effective solution, maybe for their kids, perhaps, you know, their loved ones, people who are older that just, you know, just need to find a device that can get them online so they can catch up and explore a few other possibilities as well. So let's go ahead and unbox this Chromebook and see what it's all about. So this is the Acer Chromebook Plus 515. It's currently on sale for $270 on Best Buy. The packaging is pretty minimal as the box is 100% recyclable, so bonus points for that. I also noticed that the power adapter is super compact, which makes it perfect for travel as it doesn't take up that much space. Setting it up is super simple. Once you open the lid for the first time, all you need is to sign into your Wi-Fi network and then your Google account, and then you're off to the races. Seriously, I was up and running in less than five minutes, which is pretty awesome. Now, my first impressions with the hardware is that it's pretty lightweight, coming in at just under four pounds, and it's 0.8 inches thin, which is fair considering you're getting a 15-inch display. The chassis is mostly made out of plastic materials, and it comes in this steel gray finish uh, with half of this front lid featuring this brushed texture. It's a sleek and minimal design that can fit within any working environment. The build quality is a substantial upgrade compared to what I used to work with almost eight years ago. And it also comes with a sleeve in the box, so that can easily fit the laptop or the Chromebook and the included power adapter. No problem. Opening the Chromebook with one hand is a bit of a challenge, but once you're past that, you're greeted with a full HD 15.6 inch display. And what can I say? It's a generous screen size because it provides a great screen real estate to get all sorts of work done, whether if you're, you know, viewing documents side by side using Google Docs or managing spreadsheets. It's a pretty decent panel. I will admit it's not the most brightest panel, so our visibility might be a little bit of a challenge. Uh, and honestly, for kids who are going to school using this thing in their curriculum. Uh, it's a great starter panel for that, guys. And also, you know, it's perfect for your grandparents if they just want to see your beautiful face. Speaking of which, this is what the webcam looks like on the Acer Chromebook 515. I was surprised to find a 1080p sensor on a $400 device. So the quality is pretty good and it should get through most of your meetings. And in fact, Google has uh, implemented some AI features to enhance the vocal clarity. Plus it comes with a physical privacy shutter switch that just gives you a peace of mind knowing that there's something covering your sensor when it's not in use. And there's an LED light indicating whether it's on or off, which is also neat. Port setup on the Chromebook is actually pretty generous considering its price point. I mean, it has more ports than some thin internet laptops that cost four times the price. So you get two USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-C ports, a full-size USB-A, and an HDMI port that's quick and convenient to plug it into a TV. The max output, I believe, is 1080p at 60 hertz. I was able to simply kick back and catch up on some F1 content in my living room. Chrome OS does support dual display outputs, so you can easily connect this to a monitor and expand your screen real estate. 
The USB-C ports also support fast charging as well, which is really convenient, especially for kids who carry these things to school. Something that caught me off guard on this Chromebook was the inclusion of front-facing speakers. Yeah, <laughs> you heard that right. Most gaming laptops skip this feature, and yet, this Chromebook prioritizes immediate consumption as part of the user experience. Because let's be real, we're all looking for that sweet spot, which is basically a device that can be used for both work and play, and this one has it balanced. You also get a pretty basic keyboard with dedicated keys for cruising back on a web page, recording your screen, uh, pulling up a desk view, and controlling your media playback. It's simple and handy. So Chromebook Plus runs Chrome OS. It's essentially a Linux-based operating system, and its main goal is to offer simplicity, ease of use, and a secure way to manage your workflow. Now, is it as advanced as a laptop running Windows or Mac OS? Absolutely, positively not. But there are certain things that I appreciate about this operating system. And the first and the most noticeable difference is the quick boot up time. It only takes less than five seconds to get you to the homepage, whether you're performing a cold boot or waking it up from sleep. It's uber fast and consistent, something that Windows laptops still have a lot of catching up to do, even with the most high-end hardware. I think it's just perfect for those who want to get straight to work without any delays. The home screen on Chrome OS is pretty straightforward. Google's own applications are conveniently pinned to the shelf at the bottom right over here. You can think of this like the taskbar, uh, and you can also pin other applications to your preference with just a few simple taps. There is a quick launcher that can be accessed with a dedicated key that serves as a central hub for accessing applications, settings, uh, and performing Google searches. Or internet searches. Managing your files is a breeze thanks to the local file management app. You can quickly access files offline, including quick access to the downloads folder and your Google Drive, which is synced with your Google ID. The My Files tab pretty much secures uh, all of your local files to the SSD. This particular model has 120 gigabytes of storage, and while that's not a lot of space to work with, you can easily expand it using an external drive or flash drive. And the transit speeds are pretty quick thanks to the faster USB ports. Now, the core of Chrome OS is the Chrome browser. It essentially is a portal that connects you to the internet and helps you stay connected. And you probably knew that. I spend the majority of my time researching, scripting, and doing some admin work for the channel. And I was able to pretty much do all of that with this Chromebook, no problem, without any hiccups. Our team at Harvard Canucks are pretty much there, spread across the globe. Dimitri's in Bulgaria, Mike is in Montreal. I'm based here in Toronto. So basically the key to staying connected is through Google Workspace. We use Google Docs for strategizing content ideas, facilitating seamless collaboration for real-time feedback. We also share a Google spreadsheet file where we log all of our benchmarking results for all the CPUs, the GPUs, and the laptops that get tested. So they can be validated by everyone at the team. And let me tell you guys, that saves us a considerable amount of time. We also use Google Calendar to schedule content two or maybe three months in advance. And if something does happen in the schedule, if there's a disruption, we can simply make those changes and it becomes transparent and it reflects everyone else's calendar in real time. So it just avoids miscommunication. Google Meet is also another great tool that we use uh, regularly to schedule team meetings, which allows us to catch up and brainstorm on upcoming content. I personally use Google Keep uh, to quickly jot down notes and recipes that I find on the internet uh, that I can quickly access with my phone when I'm prepping up dinner at home. The integration with all these apps is just seamless thanks to the robust synchronization inherent in Chrome OS. It just works. But it doesn't stop there because there's so many other use cases for Chrome OS, like in the education field, for instance, because of how affordable they are. It's just easy to manage, and it integrates seamlessly with apps, which then provide a productive platform for students and teachers. There's also the coding community, where Chrome OS supports web-based IDEs like Replit or Glitch. They run right within your browser, or you can create a shortcut, which can also be added to the shelf, and boom, you're off to the races coding and collaborating with your peers in real time. VS Code is also supported on Chrome OS. Once you enable the Linux beta setting, uh, it'll essentially download the tools to create the Linux environment and configure it for you. You're also more than welcome to enable developer mode to sideload third-party apps or operating systems, but keep in mind that that does compromise on the security features that come out of the box with Chromebook Plus. Just a simple Reddit search, interestingly enough, got me into playing with some code. I also learned that a vast number of people, including computer engineers, use Chromebooks as their primary device. Now, as a creator, I obviously can't edit my videos on a Chromebook, but I did take the liberty to explore some photo editing using Adobe Lightroom, and 
The experience was pretty cool. I took some raw photos on the Pixel 8 Pro, played around with some sliders, and I think it turned out pretty well. Now, the experience isn't as close to Lightroom Classic on a Windows laptop, since this is essentially an Android-based uh, version scaled for these horizontal screen real estate, but the ability to kickstart my edits on a $400 device is pretty awesome. Now let's talk gaming on a Chromebook. And honestly, I was a bit skeptical about this whole cloud gaming thing at first, but after a bit of tinkering, I got it up and running, and I gotta say, it's pretty mind-blowing how this tech works. So the setup revolves around NVIDIA's GeForce Now, and interestingly enough, it plays really well with Chrome OS. You'll need to sign up for a subscription service, which starts as low as $10 a month, and instantly, you're basically renting these GPUs to play your game library. If you've got a hefty Steam collection or some epic titles, no problem, just link those accounts and you're good to go. Now, of course, all games are not supported, but I was able to fire up Cyberpunk and appreciate the futuristic cityscape and intricate character designs. As you can see, I'm basically just doing my thing at 1080p with the highest quality preset, and I'm getting over 60 frames per second, which is pretty cool. I even tried out Star Wars Jedi Order and just drifted away with its immersive visuals. And the best part is you can easily pair the Chromebook with something like this 8-bit Do gamepad controller and just kick back and game on. Oh, and if you're a Rocket League fanatic, you're gonna have lots of fun with the setup. Now, something that I should mention is that even when gaming at this resolution, can't even hear any fans on this Chromebook, because usually with gaming laptops, you gotta set it to the performance mode, get the best performance, it's gonna sound like a jet fan. But this silent and gaming experience, I mean, how cool is that? Now, quick heads up, Cloud gaming depends on two factors, your internet speed and your geographical location. If you're city central, you're golden, but if you're out in the boonies with sluggish network speeds, well, tough luck. So game wisely, my friends. The rest of the performance has been pretty solid. I mean, this thing has a Core i3 CPU with eight gigabytes of RAM, and I didn't notice any slowdowns, even with 20 plus tabs side by side open. In fact, Chrome has integrated a memory saver mode that proactively discards tabs that have been unused in the background uh, for some time, and then it frees up memory for active tabs, as well as other applications that may be running in the background. Uh, and battery life, I was able to get around seven hours of mixed usage with browsing the web, watching videos, and of course, polishing up my coding knowledge. So it's pretty solid for your everyday work setup. So that's the Chromebook Plus, guys. I think it's pretty awesome. It's a fantastic choice for educational institutions, particularly for middle school students. You know, you don't want to hook them up with a $1,500 laptop that'll break in the next few months. This is just a cost-effective solution that gets a job done. And hey, I mean, it's a sweet gift for seniors, keeping them connected without any tech headaches. Now, if you're rocking a badass gaming setup at home, but you need something light on the go for quick notes or emailing or even getting into a bit of web development, this thing will get the job done pretty well. Plus, when you're not busy being productive, you can just hook this up to your TV and boom, it's now your movie buddy at home. It's simply versatile. Fits right into wherever you need to. It also serves as an excellent family laptop as well. So if you're in a family of five, you can have five separate accounts with five different profiles. It's fast and easy to set up so you can use one for entertainment, work and play and just have fun. But let us know how you guys would use a Chromebook Plus. If you're already using one, feel free to share your experience down in the comments. I'm Eva with Hardware Connects. Thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.